Today, I wanted to show you guys this really cool robotics and mechanical engineering video I found. So first, take a look at this cool video of it like spinning around and just moving. It looks like a little spike ball that the girl had in Kill Bill when she was like going to kill uh, our main lady in Kill Bill. Who, who was the main lady in Kill Bill? The way you get to this ball shape in the video, they make these gears. And the, basically what they do from there is they extrude the spherical gear into like a ball. And then they make a gear that kind of matches up the curve that you would whenever you do that rotation. You're able to spin the ball in one direction and no matter how the ball turns, as long as the other gear matches that, you're still able to stick together and spin in that direction. What they do then is they do a cut extrude with uh, another gear in the opposite direction and then basically you're able to turn and slide this ball back and forth and you're able to get all this like uh, degrees of freedom and whatnot. So what's cool about this is that they also had a paper with it and it kind of describes all the kinematics of it. So if you're going to make a design that uses this ball, I'd recommend really digging into it and understanding exactly how the kinematics works out for this. Well, one of the things that I want to point to that a lot of the other coverage is kind of glossed over in this, in, in the paper, they point to like the downfalls of this design. One of the big things they mention is kind of the manufacturing of this ball because you have to have a really kind of mathematically precise uh, angle for however that second gear is going to line up with the spherical ball. So you have to make sure that those line up super precisely and any deviation from that is going to cause like uneven wear over time, which will result in you not having as accurate movement and positioning as you did previously. And so over time that will cause failure with it being such a weird part and uh, such a weird design. So like, you're not gonna be able to just go to any, uh, you know, machine shop and be able to get this thing made, or you're not gonna be able to have any vendors where it's gonna be easy to buy this kind of thing. So if you were to actually use it in the design, uh, you're gonna have to have a some way to replace this particular component. And you need to make sure when you're designing that you account for that. Another thing that I'd look for in this design that would kind of give me a little bit of pause is that depending on the angle that you're going, and depending on that, it's going to really change how fast your gears have to move and how fast you need to like turn and stuff. Because even in the design, you can see where they had to rapidly swap back around to the other side. Um, and I'm not really sure if this is just a limitation of what they're showing, but I could see that causing issues where if you run a motion or a pattern where you're doing that like a hundred times in an hour, you're going to burn this design out really quick and you're going to destroy the motor and the gearing enclosure really quickly. So they start out their paper making a justification for this kind of design. And the way they justify it is saying, hey, in the past we've had friction mount ball joints and we've had some other stuff that, you know, a three axis kind of ball joint that is really limited on the type of angles and the range of freedom that you have. So you're either limited by these friction joints that have uh, severe inefficiency or these kind of really limited angular kind of joints but with our design and this kind of two spherical gear, or they're calling it a cross spherical gear, uh, you're able to have the efficiency of a, a gear joint, but the range of freedom that you get from like a friction kind of joint. Also, it does kind of just look pretty cool. Like it looks kind of spacey and like, oh, that's fancy. Another thing I wanted to touch on was how you'd lubricate this kind of design. Do you just like embed it in a bunch of oil? Like it's just embedded, you embed it and then you just have an end effector that's out of this like a uh, bath of oil? Or do you do like a consumption based? Do you just like throw some grease at it? I'd be really curious to see how like the lubrication of this device works and how kind of the standard maintenance of a device like this would work. So one final note, I'd be curious to see some of the applications that this thing has 
you'd have to figure out how to make sure to run wires through it if you wanted to have some type of end effector that's really complicated or if this has to always be near the end of your end effector. I'd be curious to see some designs with this and to see how people have actually implemented this design. Of course, this is all a research paper and this is just like, hey, can we make something like this? So I don't, I don't expect the designers or the engineers of this to account for that. So this is a new kind of video for me where I'm just kind of looking at some other, somebody else's engineering. I'm still working on a bunch of stuff over here. Uh, so if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you really like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button. If you really disagreed with me, just comment down below. I, I read all of them and I'll even talk to you about it.